Good morning. The today's topic is ceramic membranes. Uh, membranes are there in our body. There are our skin is itself a membrane. For example, membranes for, are used in a huge amounts of areas. If you are looking at, say, uh, you just type ceramic membranes over here on the screen. You find ceramic membranes for gas separation, water treatment. And you find a huge number of references for ceramic membranes as soon as you Google it. So you should realize that in this course, I shall only talk briefly about what they are, how they work, and certain selected areas. Membrane separation fundamentally depends on these few processes. Let's take the case of water. Many of you have seen, have you at your homes, the so-called water filters. There's a plastic case in which there is a candle. You pour water in and the water goes out through the candle. This is what is uh, filtration of fine solids. The pores are very large. Beyond that, beyond that cheap water filter, we have various types of membranes which are used for filtering. For example, when the earthquake struck at Latour, it was a massive one and many of you may have read about it. One of the first things that happens in earthquakes is the water supply lines are damaged. And that is when water is required the most. So what happened was NGOs from abroad brought such trucks in. It would take the totally unpurified, often gunky water and convert it to potable water. This is another one which was used extensively. It was developed uh, for use in space where you have this capsule, just leave it in the gunky water and you have portable water in the glass. Uh, so basically, beyond that candle filter which you use at your home, which is basically made from porous ceramics, it can be uh, basically crushed rocks, zeolites, all of that. We have further fine filtration, further finer pores, which through which we can separate out emulsions, pigments and colloids. Then there is still finer pores, which almost goes to submicron zone, where we have sugars, dyes, surfactants and minerals, which can be weeded out. And finally, in the current RO water filters which you have at home, we have this reverse osmosis where salts, metal ions, minerals are taken out. The basic principle is fundamentally that water is forced through this chamber to the series of chambers under pressure. The coarser ones, that is 
these emulsions, pigments, colloids, all of these metal ions, they are retained within this and pure water, purer water comes out. So, essentially in this process of say simple membrane separation of for water, what do we have? We have water going, uh, water containing either pollutants or other materials going in through a pipe under pressure, the metal ions all the impurities are being retained within the pipe and pure water comes out to the pores and the pore sizes are marked in arrows. Um, in this case, there, here in microfiltration obviously it is ceramic filter, in many of these cases they also use uh, polymeric filters because it is easier to control the pore sizes in polymers, but that is not what I intend to talk about. But this was an introduction to identify the objectives. But before that I said what is, what are membranes and what do they do. So, the membranes will have pore sizes or varying pore sizes and depending on that filtration will occur. If I look at ceramic membranes, uh, let me take this diagram. This is something that is being worked upon by a group of Japanese. You see what they have is here three different layers. It is basically a cylinder. The cross section of the cylinder is this is a large core porous support. You can look at the sizes 80 to 150 nanometers. There is a second intermediate layer where the pore size of the ceramic membrane drops to 4 to 10 nanometers. And finally, on the top, we have the finest layer of about 0.3 nanometers or less. The inner layer is made up from alumina and the in, uh, intermediate layer is made up from finer grained alumina while the outer layer is basically made up from amorphous silica. This is done so that ultimately in this membrane synthesis process we want to convert say carbon monoxide to methane. So, we pass the carbon monoxide plus hydrogen through the inside, through the outside methane will come out, thus reducing the carbon monoxide. Now, this is a current work being undertaken by the Japanese in collaboration with others on removal of carbon monoxide from certain systems. So, here for example, I am taking this example because we will not talk of only one layer, but they are now putting in three layers of three different spore sizes and they are bonded to e each other very well. Why is this layer required? This porous layer re is required to keep out larger particles which are basically dust. So, that the carbon monoxide and the hydrogen can react giving off methane which comes out through the outer layer or the, the, the outer layer. Now, in membrane separation, membranes, uh, hence what I can say is there is a microfiltration
with pore sizes uh, 0 0.1 to 10 micrometers. The feed is a liquid, the permeate means what comes out is a liquid and this is basically a separation process. The driving force is difference in pressure. In ultrafiltration, the pore size is 2 to 100 nanometers, feed is liquid, permeate is liquid, driving force is pressure. In nanofiltration, it is a 1 to 2 nanometers, liquid, liquid driving force is pressure. In reverse osmosis, it is less than 1 nanometer, it is liquid, liquid driving force is again pressure. The same can be used for gas separation also. Uh, For per per vaporation, is a liquid. What comes out is a gas. We are separating a gas from a liquid, and the size is zero point five to two nanometers. There can be a lot more. The best known one, dialysis. where it is a liquid, liquid and uh, delta liquid, liquid. Now, you notice we are, I have kept this vacant. You see, I talked of this technology where they plan to convert carbon monoxide by reacting with hydrogen to give me methane which is then collected. Why did I keep this vacant? Today, in throughout the world, you, you see multi-million kidney patients with kidney failures uh, having to undergo dialysis. That is, their the blood is taken out, they are forced through certain very fine membranes where the separation is done. There, polymer fibers are used. All of you read about mission to Mars. One of the things that is holding it back is our lack of ability to develop a ceramic dialysis system which would be no larger than say this which would be clipped onto my somewhere near my belt through which all my urine would pass while I am in space for the entire time releasing the water. It would purify my urine to give me water to drink and the urine would be rejected and the bad and the elements in my urine would be rejected. Here all we all we have been trying to develop in spite of advantages is a ceramic membrane system of this size which would take the spacecraft or human from the earth to Mars and back. Payload is a very important problem in space. So, to reduce the amount of water to be carried, this is a very mission critical technology. One of the reasons why the mission is being repeatedly pushed back is our failure to
to develop this particular cartridge. I have written so many things. I said, OK, we are working on all of these membranes. But unfortunately, we have failed to deliver the ceramic cartridge which would be required for mission to Mars. So, this technology is a very, very open wide technology. And why is it so? It is very simple. I very convenient while showing this diagram, I very conveniently said, okay, there are a series of pipes through which I push the gunk, water carrying all the impurities under pressure and I get the water out. Easier said than done because after some time, the pores which are there in this filter will get blocked. How do you clean it? Because here is the biggest problem. If you just uh, go to YouTube and uh, let me see if I can do it. I will do it only very briefly because that is not the real subject or by lecture, but I am doing it only to emphasize a point. This is hemodialysis equipment and this is really the, fil the filter through which the blood passes out, passes in and is forced out. It essentially has an external container Essentially here, we are using the reverse of this, of this technique. What we want, blood molecules are larger. So here we have got cassettes, which has got ceramic uh, uh, polymeric fibers, hollow polymeric fibers loaded and through which the blood flows in. Water flows through the outside and out because it is washing away all the water which is coming out carrying all the ions over here and they are being washed out. One of the biggest problems of if you go through those hemodialysis videos you will see is after two or three such dialysis the pores get clogged and that whole unit just becomes unusable and this is one of the reasons why dialysis is so expensive in India. However, while all of these have been done, this is an area of human concern where lot needs to be done, really lots and this is one of the areas that I shall be addressing. You see, what are the advantages? I said that there are polymeric membranes in existence. 
I showed you that in Latour, when they had, did not have any portable water, what type of membrane technology was used to purify all the dirty water to portable water. All these technologies were used actually in USA on a large scale when Katrina hurricane struck and it was just a mess at New Orleans. It was these trucks, these membrane filtration processes which helped save the day. Yet, polymeric membranes do have certain disadvantages. Ceramic membranes have certain advantages. Uh, if I look at the advantages of ceramic membranes, One is thermal stability, which allows separation at elevated temperatures. Hence, sterilization that is freeing from bacteria and virus occurs simultaneously. So, as you filter the as you separate sterilization also occurs. Resistance to organic solvents For those of you who have got the older type of, um, I won't, I just have to say water purifiers, you would have seen they have a carbon filter. What is that for? The carbon adsorbs the organics which passes out through the membrane. But when we are talking of say disasters happening, there is water bodies being contaminated heavily with organics, oil, in seas you have formed whenever there is a tanker break, it forms emulsions and purified water has to be taken out from that gooey gunky mass, ceramic membranes become very handy because they are resistant to organic solvents. So, oil organic separation is relatively easier with ceramic membranes. Further, you see there are areas of uh, many areas, for example, food, diced food industry uses membranes very, very heavily. Uh, wine industry is one industry which relies today heavily on ceramic membranes for filtration and uh, this is because the ceramic membranes offer the ability to filter out materials which would have otherwise affected the polymer. So, this resistance to organic solvents is not only oil or organic this is food, beverages, wines if I am permitted to do, but that is a very high value industry where ceramic membranes are used. The other reason is res chemical resistance I would say, let me make it broad, chemical resistance. Uh, 
uh, like say for example peroxide resistance the textile industry this uses perox perox uh, peroxides very heavily for whitening they need to recover the wa water from the wash polymeric membranes are totally unsuitable in such cases textile industry is heavily dependent on ceramic membranes further this allows cleaning of the membranes you see when i talked of dialysis i said those are a bundle of polymeric fibers through which the blood passes the outer contain chamber water flows in the ions in the blood which are in excess sodium potassium and whatever they are dialyzed out into the pure water they are dialyzed out in the water the blood is rid gotten rid of the sodium potassium phosphates all of that and the purified blood goes out i said one of the biggest problems of this was every time a dialysis is done some of the pores get blocked so what is routinely done is after the dialysis is over the whole chamber is back flushed with water it means uh, yeah it means that after dialysis when these have stopped water is now forced in water forced in and water goes out and also water comes out through this because the water permeates these in through into the membranes and we attempt to clean the membrane these are actually hollow fibers these are actually hollow fibers blood flows in through this so when water is forced in it permeates and gets into this and is pushed out this is called back flush it is not only th these are these are back flush one of the biggest problems is the pressure on the water which can be used over here is limited because we do not want to break the membrane wall due to the water pressure and hence cleaning of the pores which are over here by back flushing is not effective and as a result after three or four reuses this membrane has to be thrown away which makes dialysis in india very expensive so if i am going to look at ceramic membranes the mechanical strength is high and so back flushing at higher pressures is possible now erode is possible though i have admitted very singularly when i presented this one i have drawn a blank we really do not have an effective ceramic membrane for cleaning of urine while in space even today astronauts use adult diapers they wear it for 7 days and then they are disposed of in either in space or when they come back as of today ceramic membranes used for purification of urine so that the water can be recycled back because the payload has to be decreased 
has failed. In that case, what we really require is really a three layer one of the type shown, but that has not worked out so far. The disadvantages is of course, staring at your face. The advantage of polymers is that we can control the pore sizes very easily. Why? Because the, what is a polymer basically? It has got long chains of carbohydrates and depending on the chain configuration, these pore sizes can be easily controlled. But in ceramics, whenever we are talking of a membrane, we are in ceramics, we are talking of centering. And sintering or the rate of sintering is dependent on a huge variety of factors. To have reproducible sintering batch to batch is one of the toughest challenges. Yes, true, you have got Hitkari cups which cost each of which cost today 600 rupees. <coughs> you would not see batch to batch variation, but there it is not a membrane. It is a cup with a glazed body, but here we are talking of percolation of one phase liquid or gas through pores of control size and there getting sintered porous ceramic Sintered porous ceramic is a real challenge because what are you going to center? Finally, you are going to center. So, you have seen sponges. So, basically, you will take the ceramic, make a slurry of it, dry it so that it gives you a sponge like mass, and fire it so that hoping that the pores which exist in the sponge like structure would be there in the fired ceramic. I use the word hoping, but real control, control down to the highest level to the finest pores is still a big challenge. I have a colleague of mine who is now at IIT Bombay. Uh, let me see if I can get him over here because he did one of the most impressive works I have ever seen. Yeah. Uh, this gentleman, he was a colleague of mine then. He worked on porous ceramics. Uh, let me see if I can get a screenshot of his ceramic. Ah, this is what I was looking for. He developed these ceramics. These had pores of the order of uh, it varied depending on his processing requirement um, from a couple of millimeters to fraction of a micrometer. You see, what he did was he took this ceramics powder made into a slurry. Now, the thing he wanted to do, he did was this powder he has made into a slurry. It has to be formed in order to get a honeycomb structure, a foam basically. This foam we would center to get the porous body. 
Uh, due to copyright restrictions, I cannot elaborate, but I will give you a brief view as to what, how he did it. You see, he was making porous ceramic and he was using soap nut. He was using soap nut. That is what they call in Bengali, I know is rite. You dissolve it in water and use it for shampooing your head. He simply used that liquid of soap nut to form this ceramic foam. Uh, earlier, he had used the egg white to make these ceramic foams and he then migrated to Bombay and he has now got an industry which makes these ceramic foams tailor made for say molten aluminium filtration. Aluminium in the secondary aluminium industry is a big industry. They use lots of aluminium which are scraps which they melt and when it melts they have got a lot of particles inside it. Unless they can remove these particles the aluminium would be brittle. They require ceramic filters and using this technology or I am not sure which one he used soap nut or the egg white. He developed ceramic filters which are being marketed right now for use by these industries. However, you have to realize I said these are for filtration of molten metals where there are large particles and there yes we do have lots of ceramic filters available in the market. These membranes are used in a wide variety of places. So basically what we will have is a top layer with ultra fine pores. a median layer with coarser pores and finally a larger layer with still larger pores. So that the impurities can be successively blocked as it goes through and finally it is filtered. So depending on the relative pore sizes at this layer, at this layer and at this layer will the degree of filtration vary. If I am going to look at the preparation method for these inorganic membranes, say I am looking at first porous membranes. Uh, materials can be alpha alumina, zirconium dioxide, titanium dioxide all of these have been used. Pore diameter is of the order of 100 nanometers. And they have been made from powder using extrusion, tape casting, among other processes. Sol gel rather alkoxide based sol gel process 
has been used for making porous membranes of silica, alumina, zirconia, titania, iron oxide with particle size range into 1 to 50 nanometers. Now, here you should remember I talked of zero gel and aerogel. I talked of alkoxide gel as zero gel and aerogel. And now you should be able to understand which one, why is the aerogel will be able to filter out finer ones, finer gases, smaller molecular weight gases, while zero gel can be used for larger particles. Uh, I have talked of porous membranes. Now, there is another type of membranes which is dense membranes. or they can be called non porous membranes which are basically made from yttria stabilized zirconia perovskites pore size is zero and their solid electrolytes I shall come back to these two later. Yttria stabilized zirconia is, for example, is used in solid oxide fuel cells. And there are again composite membranes. Uh, materials like say magnesia, silver, basically here what we do is ceramic is modified with a second phase material. I have just limited myself to uh, only a very few areas because the scope of this whole thing is so high that it is virtually impossible to cover the entire technology. Let me carry on over here. I did talk of various compounds. But is it that they can be used very arbitrarily? The answer is no. Let us look at the limitations. If I look at the pore size and uh, I have a logarithmic scale, this is 1 nanometer. Ten nanometer, hundred nanometer. Just as uh, a reference, I go back to where I was. This is the area of reverse osmosis. This is the area of nano filtration. This is the area of ultra filtration and this is the area of standard filtration, microfiltration, but that is not where I want to focus on. If I am looking at alumina, the type of pore sizes that are possible with alumina is in this zone. It will be microfiltration and this is alpha alumina. 
if I am using gamma alumina, it will be usable in this zone. However, this is unstable in aqueous solution. If I am using titania, this is of course stable in aqueous solution. With titania, if I push my luck, because the thing is titania when I center it, titania I heat, it will give, give or it will be TiO2 minus X plus OX, it gives off oxygen. Now, in centering I had said, if there is a defect, rate of centering is increased. So, here as soon as I start centering, over here as soon as I start centering, defects are being created, as a result centering rate will increase. Now, if I can control this, I can push titania to almost 1 nanometer level and titania is stable in aqueous solution. Zirconium dioxide, same story as titania, but I can push this to almost 1 nanometer if I can control the centering property. Advantage of zirconia is it is stable in alkali. Alkali solution. Now, if you remember my diagram, which I started off with, I said this layer, this final layer is made up of what? Silica. With silica, SiO2, I can push this porosity limit to virtually anywhere I want or even beyond. For example, many of you have used for filtration in the laboratory, uh, crucible is like this. With a whitish filter over here, these are called gooch crucibles. This one is really uh, they take silica powder of different sizes, they press it into the form of discs and center it. So, depending on the size of the powder and silica, the, the porosity shall vary. Now, these crucibles, I guess they cost at most today 100 rupees for the finest variety and these are routinely used in the laboratory. For silica, I can have this entire stretch. <laughs> but the problem with silica, is this, let me write and I am guess you will be really seeing, thinking if I am off my head, that is if I should be confined to a mental institution. It is unstable in aqueous media. You see, we take water from glasses which are made up of silica. We store water in jugs which are made up of silica and here I am writing silica is unstable in aqueous media. I am a person fit for the mental asylum but unfortunately not. This is 100 percent true. We are not aware of how much silica dissolves in the water. At times you will see if you have kept water in a bottle for a long time, the side of the bottle gets translucent 
because the silica from the bottle has dissolved in the water. And in such cases, when we are talking of ceramic membranes, where extreme control over the process has to be there, dissolution of silica in water is simply unacceptable. And that's a major, major problem. This has been bypassed by using silica germania, which has got better stability in aqueous media. Uh, though the final one I will write and you will say hey is it a ceramic I personally feel today's technology carbon is a ceramic and here at sub nanometer levels it can be it is used as gas separation in your water purifiers at home it is used as odor removers means they they absorb the organics and uh, there is a very large number of ceramic membranes I have talked of in this class. I shall talk on the ceramic membrane technology subsequently after the intermission.